Hey everybody, today Rotto runs through the Council of Verona, a brand new card game that's on Kickstarter right now, or, or maybe it's about to be on Kickstarter, I'm not quite sure, but I was sent a prototype of it to do a run through, and my wife and I have played it a few times now, and we, we could because it's so quick, it's a quickie 10 minute game, in fact I'm going to do a full run through of a full game right now so you can see the whole experience, and uh, let's just jump right into it. Now, at the beginning of the game, now I'm going to be playing a two-player game. So I've got my starting hand of five cards randomly drawn, and Jen's got her starting hand of five. We've also got our little influence chips. They are a five, a zero, a four, a zero, three, four, and a five. Everybody has the same chips. And in this game, these are the three cards that will not be in the game. We don't know what they are, but let's take a look at my hand. I don't know what Jens is, obviously, but I do know that I've got Lord Capulet, Mercutio, Lady Montague, oh, uh, Benvolio, and the Nurse. And now you may notice from these names and you know the title itself, Verona, Council of Verona, this game is set in and around the events of Romeo and Juliet, which is just a really, really cool idea to use you know, a public domain a piece of literature that is so well loved and so well known to build a game out of. Now, the setting of this game is the people of Verona, we, we, you know, we are the players, we're the people of Verona, and we are so outraged at the constant infighting between the Capulets and the Montagues that we have called for action. So we have formed the Council of Verona. And we are the ones who are going to be peopling it with um, you know, these particular cards. Every turn, basically, we are going to add, we're going to play one of our cards to either add them to the Council of Verona or send them to exile. Just kick them out of town because we don't want to see them anymore. And it's really as simple as that. Uh, you know, we play a card and we place some influence on it and we do an action if it calls for it. And so Jen and I are each going to play ten, five cards in, in order and that will be the entire game. It's going to go really, really quick. Let's see. Oh, one other thing I should say, in a two-player game, you just get five cards randomly. With three or four players, there's actually a card draft, which is actually pretty cool, but I won't be demonstrating that. Uh, but you, you can imagine, you know, I've just got to figure out a strategy with these five cards I've been given. But with the card drafting, you can build a quick uh, a deck to actually try and pursue a strategy. But anyway, so let's look at my cards. What are they? What am I going to try and do? Now, I've got two cards of my five that are victory point scoring. The Lord Capulet and Mercutio. And Lord Capulet, he wants to have more Capulets um, than Montagues on the council. And Mercutio wants to have more people exiled than on the council. Because he's just a bitter guy, I guess. So... Those become two strategies that I'm trying to pursue potentially. I want to ensure there are more Capulets on the council than Mon or Montagues, and if I can, I have more people in exile than on the council. And then you know the nurse, she lets me move a character from exile to the council. Uh, Benvolio is the opposite, lets me move a character from uh, the council to exile. And Lady Montague, who I want to be in exile because I don't want her to be on the council because of Lord Capulet, she can swap two influence tokens. So that's what I got in my hand. Jen has got mystery cards. We'll find out over the course of the game what she's got. So let's just go ahead and start. I guess I will start with playing Lord Capulet. The first card I'm going to play, I'm going to play him to the council. Up here, this is exile. This is outside of town. Here is inside town. So I have put Lord Capulet on the council. Now, after I've played him, if um, he has an action, I could do it, but he doesn't have an action. He's an in-game score. So I skipped that part, and now I can place influence. Remember, I've got these four chips that you're supposed to keep secret. You're not supposed to let anybody know which chips you've played because they get played face down. Now, I'm going to try hard to make this happen, but you know I might not succeed. So I think I'll go on ahead and put my four points. This is worth four points at the end of the game. Um, I will put this influence on Lord Capulet. Now that means at the end of the game, if Lord Capulet is successful in his goal of having more Capulets and Montagues on the council, I will score this four points. Plus, since I was the first guy to come here, I'll get plus one. So I'll score a total of five points if this is successful. Now Jen doesn't know that though. For all Jen knows, I put my zero on here and this is a bluff. I don't really care about it. She doesn't know. But anyway, so that was my first turn and now Jen's gonna take a turn and so excuse me for a second while I look at her cards and see what she's all about. Let's see, d -d -d -d. hmm. Okay, well for starters, she is gonna play Juliet, who as you can see, uh, is a point scorer, and well, you know, actually, she's gonna play Juliet to exile. 
Um, Juliet is not in the town, which is too bad because, of course, I would like Juliet to be in town because Lord Capulet wants more Capulets on the council. But Jen has decided to exile Juliet. Now, Juliet, her scoring is if she and Romeo are together, either in exile or on the council, either way, then she will score her points. So now Jen's put that down, and I think she is done. She could place one of her influence tokens, but she is not going to. Now, she could put it on Juliet to start working on this, or she could put it on my card and start trying to score points off of this as well. But, you know, actually, will she? No, she's not going to. She, I mean, because you're, it's optional. You don't have to. You could save your chips till later. So Jen's going to save her chips, see how things go. That was her turn. My second turn. Okay. Well, um, ba -ba -ba. let's see. Move character. Move character. Move one character from council to exile. Move character from exile. I'm going to now play the nurse. The nurse is a Capulet. Uh, you know, uh, or actually, she's two. She's neutral, and she also counts as Capulet. So she can count for either. And what she's going to do is she can move one character from exile to the council. And I will move Juliet up here to the council. And you know what the heck? I will put the nurse down. So now there are three Capulets on the council, which means Lord, uh, you know, and now I'm pretty confident that I'm going to succeed at this. It's going to be unlikely that Jen's going to you know, undo this. So I'm going to take my five pointer. So my four plus my five, I'm really confident that I will achieve my goals of having more Capulets and Montagues on the council. And so I played the nurse. I used her ability to, br to bring uh, exile character up. So, and then I finally, I played my optional influence card and now it's Jen's turn and she's going to think about what she's going to do. Let's see. Sorry, I haven't really uh, looked at what it is she's got, so I'm not necessarily playing as smart for her as I could. Alrighty. Right. She is going to play Prince Aeschylus, um, who has a, two different agendas that he could score the game on. He will score if either there's an equal number of Montagues and Capulets on the council, which is in direct opposition to Lord Cap, you know, Capulet, so only one of these two things can be true. Or he'll score if there's at least four neutral characters on the council, and currently there's two. And now Jen is going to place one of her chips. Let me see which one. She'll go ahead and place that one. And that was the end of her turn. Back to me, back to my turn. Three more cards. Uh, the game's almost halfway over. Let's see. And now... Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and play Mercutio. I will play him in exile, because remember, his thing is, he wants more people in exile than on the council. And now, I don't know if that's actually gonna happen because there's four people on the council, only one person in exile. I can move one, I can get another person out. You know, if, if I play Benvolio, I can get him out and then he would be able to bring one more person out. And so, um, but then, and then let's see, and I could also play her. So that would get a total of four. But the problem is, if, if I do that, I'll be tipping my hat. It'll be obvious to Jen that I'm trying to do this. And it'll, well, depending on what card she has, she might be able to undo that. So do I want to do this? Well, but if I don't start working on him now, by the end of the game, it'll be too late to try and score points off of him. Or do I say to heck with him, I don't really care. Now, one thing I know I don't want to do, I don't want to put him on the council anyway, because then it's getting closer to Jen's scoring condition of having at least four neutrals on the council. He's neutral. Let's see. Move one character from the council to exile. Now, I could kick one character off the council. I think I'll do that. I'm gonna play Oh, yeah, hmm. If you and I get a council on the council, or at least four neutrals on the council. Okay, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna play Benvolio. I will play him to exile, so he's not on the council, and his ability is when I play him, move one character from council to exile, and I will move Jen's guy over here. Now, there's, um, you know, so my Lord Capulet is still pretty happy. There's not no monarchies on the council. And um, you know, I've moved Jen off and thereby limited her ability to ensure that there are four neutral people on the council. So anyway, so that's my turn. And you know what, what the heck, I am so confident in this. I'm gonna go ahead and play my last scoring one. So I have totally locked this in. And you know, maybe Jen on her turn should have actually jumped on this to, so she could have scored some points with it too. But anyway, back to Jen's turn. Now what is she gonna do? Let's see. Right. Okay, she 
is going to play Friar Lawrence, who uh, doesn't score points but has an ability, which means move one character from Exile Council, Prince Escalus is coming right on back. And so now you can see Prince Escalus once again, there are three neutrals, this is in play, and Jen is going to, do, do, do. she's gonna put, the, you know, so she's basically doubling on her own. She could be, you know, we're really kind of going our own separate ways in this one. Back to me, back to my turn. Two more cards. Okay, now, Lord Capulet is still good, um, although there is now one Montague, but if, uh, what's the chances of two more Montagues coming up? Let's see. I think, oh, that would be kind of cute. Hmm. Now, Mercutio, I don't think he's going to actually succeed now. But like, I'm going to go ahead and play him now. Well, the game's almost over. Remember, he's the one who will score if there's more exile than on the council. Yeah, I'm going to put him in exile, because if I put him onto the council, then Jen's Prince Escalus, one, two, three, four, would have four neutrals on the council. So I'm going to put him down there. And, let's see, I've still got my, my last influence, which is kind of my bluffing influence, which really isn't all that great. But, um, what the heck. I'm going to go on ahead. I'm going to put my last uh, zero pointer on Prince Escalus. So Jen, who's been trying to get ensure this thing happens, cannot put, once an influence is down, it can never move. And so by doing this, Jen will not be able to put another influence on this card, even though she'd like to, because she's trying to make this happen. So I basically blocked her with my guy that scores no points. Okay, Jen's turn. She's got two more cards. Let's see now, what's she going to do? Uh, so that can't... Okay. Hmm. That's interesting. So that'd be one, two. Uh, see, I mean, there's all, you know, it's such a simple game. There's already so much to think about. You know, that, you know, every turn the board changes completely. Let's see. That's not going to happen. All right, so she's still got to decide where she want to put her influence. All right. Well, she's going to play Lord Montague who um, is pretty much the exact opposite. You know, he scores if there are more Montagues than Capulets on the council. Now that's not likely to happen at this point because there's three Capulets and two Montagues, as you can see. But Jen will go on ahead and, you know, so she's gonna try and commit to that too. She probably would have put her last influence over there, which is the one she really cares about, but now she's been giving herself a second objective late in the game. And now, my last card, Lady Montague who, when I play her, will let me swap two influence tokens. Now, one thing I'm not going to do, I am not going to play it. I, I, she is definitely going to go into exile. No two, no two ways about it, obviously, because if she were on the council, then um, you know, Lord Capulet would be in trouble. You, you know, there'd be potential of him not scoring. And I definitely want to make sure there are more Capulets in Montague. So Lady Montague goes to exile, separated from her poor husband. Oh, so sad. It is the tragedy of Romeo and Juliet. And her ability is I can now swap two influence tokens. Now... Let's see. But I have to swap them blind. And this is optional. I don't have to do this. But, let's see. Now, chances are one of these is, uh, you know, Jen's got a pretty good chance. I don't know what her last card is, but there are one, two, three neutrals um, on, the, uh, on the table. And if her last card gives her another neutral on the table, she'll have four, and she will have scored this. So I don't know that I necessarily want her to, you know, this is probably her five or her four because she's been working on this so long. So I don't necessarily want her to score a lot of points on this. Or at the very least, you know, um, so I probably want to, I'm going to assume, I'm going to assume she started with a four, so I'm going to assume this is her five. I don't know, but I'm going to assume this is her most valuable thing, and I'm going to go put this someplace else. Uh, but it has to be swapped. Let's see. I'm, mm, I'll swap it with this. No, actually, you know what? I'll, I'll swap it with my own little zero. Because basically, if this guy does score, at least I've moved him down, and so it'll score one less point. So I've basically taken one point. Even if this does score, I, you know, I've, I've taken a point away from her. So that was my last uh, play. And now Jen's last play, what she got? She's got Tybalt, which is a Capulet, which isn't great for her um, because, you know, it's ca so she's going to play this Capulet to the um, to Exile. And his special power is one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four. Ah, interesting. 
His special power is moving one character from council to exile. So this is going to be like the final thing that happens. So, if, in fact, Tybalt moves, like say, Juliet into exile, now there are, there's an equal number of Montagues. Wow, look at that. Just like that. So Tybalt moved Juliet into exile, and now Jen's got one more influence she can place. Um, she can't get on here, but it doesn't matter. Suddenly this is no good because it's scoring condition. Let's see, this is no good um, because there aren't more Montagues than Capulets on the council. There's an equal number of Montagues and Capulets on the council. There's not three neutrals. What was the other thing? If an equal number of Montagues or Capulets... Oh, look at that! An equal number of Montagues and Capulets. Jen has succeeded in this. She's got one more influence, what the heck, doesn't really matter. She's just going ahead and place it here. And that was the end of the game. Now we score. So what we do is, uh, Mercutio, he doesn't, doesn't nobody put, put influence here, so nothing's going to score. We skip him. Lord Montague, if more Montagues and Capulets on the council, he scores. That's not the case. There's an equal number of Montagues and Capulets. So none of these score. And they were Jen's three and her zero. So that's three points she didn't, or four really. That's four points she failed to get. Doesn't score points. Me, here I put all my money down on this. Um, but unfortunately, there is an equal number of Montagues and Capulets, so I score nothing for all of that. Which comes down to Prince Aeschylus, who if the number of Montagues and Capulets on the council is equal, which it is, he scores. So Jen has scored five, nine, eight, you know, nine minus one is eight points, and I'm on here too, and I scored zero. Eight to zero. That is how the game, that is how the cookie crumbled. I looked like I was totally in control throughout this whole game. And in fact, if I'd been smart, when I did that swap, I should have seen the writing on the wall and I should have taken my five pointer and put it over here. You know, and then I could, bam, ah, still. Anyway, that was one very, very quick 10 minute game of Council of Verona. And I think it definitely showed, you know, the ebb and flow of how the game goes. Now, if you'd like, uh, you can go on ahead and push the button now to watch a, an additional play. I'm going to play the game a second time so you can maybe see some different stuff happen. Or also, you can push the other button and go straight to final thoughts. It's your choice in five, four, three, two, one. Thanks, everybody.